Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Bethany Bigenhill. And I'm Valerie Ruiz. Here's your news now. Incumbent President Barack Obama won re-election, defeating former Governor Mitt Romney. President Obama was propelled to a second term by winning 303 electoral votes, comfortably exceeding the 270 needed to win presidency. The president won 50% of the popular vote to Romney's 48%. Democrats kept a narrow control of the Senate, while Republicans maintained a majority in the House. Location got a sneak preview as the student theater prepares to open their new play, Out of Order. Next week, let's take a look. This play is about a politician in London who high, has a high government position and who decides, even though he's married, he wants to have an affair with a pretty young girl. And so the play's a little bit naughty and they meet in this hotel suite to have the affair, but they discover rather quickly that they have a serious problem that they did not anticipate. Would you like me to help you out of your dress? Uh, no, thank you. Are you sure? Oh, get out! Ooh. And in order to try to address this problem, they have to try to so solve it in a way that would not have anyone know that they were there together. And so the play becomes more and more complex as more and more people become involved. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very funny. You should hear the jokes about you that go round the typist pool. About me? About you, Mr. Willie. And with a name like that. Some of the jokes are pretty strong, I can tell you. Students can expect to see a lot of running around, a lot of pratfalls, a lot of physical comedy, a lot of shtick, and some uh, very uh, interesting jokes. The set is a part of it. The window is a character. It has a mind of its own. And uh, I think they will have a very good time. There must be a more suitable song than that. It's free. It's funny and it's here. It, it's a warm, beautiful night. Shall I open the curtains? Why not? If I remember correctly, there's a beautiful view. These balconies overlook the river. <laughs> Three hundred and fifty thousand homes in the Philadelphia area were without power due to Hurricane Sandy last week. Many of the homes affected were in Bucks and Montgomery counties. A couple from Wynwood had 12 inches of a tree come through their double pane window, according to Philly.com. Steve Schreiner, owner of Schreiner Tree Care in King of Prussia, had over 50 calls due to fallen trees in the area. Later this week, Montgomery County officials plan to count exactly the number of trees fallen. Here's a twist on ballet. This Friday, November 9th, from 8 to 10 p.m., the Wilma Theater on Broad Street in Philadelphia will be offering a show called Ballet X. This isn't a typical ballet. Ballet X offers high energy, fresh contemporary ballet. The group only does three shows a year, so grab your friends and head on down. Tickets are $22 with student ID. For more information, visit campusphilly.org. Also in Philly, on Wednesday, November 14th, at the Surgenti Arena, Chestnut Hill College, and Northwest Philadelphia Interfaith Hospitality Network will host their 14th annual Empty Bowl Dinner. The event raises awareness about children in the Philadelphia area who go without a meal every day. Every participant will be given a handcrafted bowl provided by local businesses to eat their meal out of. All proceeds will benefit Interfaith Hospitality Network. Admission is $8 for students. That was your trip around the block. Now let's go to wrap for this week's sports update. Cabrini fans were pleased to see their athletes fighting in four different CSAC title games, men's soccer, women's soccer, volleyball, and field hockey. Field hockey dropped their title game 5-1 to, to the Gwinn and Mercy College Griffins on Saturday. However, they still enjoyed a nice season and will retain its young nucleus for next year. Volleyball also lost their CSAC final in a full five sets to the Newman University Knights. Newman was the only CSAC team to beat them this year. There is a silver lining as six players received CSAC awards. Cassidy Canning was named Rookie of the Year and made all CSAC first team alongside Sofia Soklovich and Danny Carosa. Meg Ryan was named to the second team and Michelle Fitz earned an honorable mention. Dana Wisniewski was named to the CSAC All-Sportsmanship team. Good news comes from men's soccer as they clinched a bid in the NCAA tournament with a 2-1 victory in the final against Rosemont College with Anthony Girolamo and Gabe Kuhn recording Cav goals. Women's soccer clinched their CSAC title with a victory over Gwyn and Mercy in what can fittingly be called the greatest CSAC game ever played. The game was scoreless through 110 minutes and needed penalty kicks to determine a winner. The game winner was scored by none other than goalkeeper Maddie Edwards. The win clinches a CSAC title for the Lady Cavs and earns them a berth in the NCAA tournament. 
In Philly sports, the Eagles dropped at 3 and 5 following a dismal 28 to 13 loss to the New Orleans Saints on the National Monday Night Football stage. Many fans are calling for coach Andy Reid's job. Should he be fired? Tweet us your thoughts at location PR. The Sixers find themselves at 1 and 2 following losses to the New York Knicks on Sunday and Monday in a home and home series. This week we'll see them on a road trip to New Orleans, Boston and Toronto, eh? This week's Location Athlete of the Week goes to Maddie Edwards for her well-rounded play in the CSAC tournament. In both games, she shut the opposition out, totaling 200 shutout minutes. She also scored the game winner to clinch the CSAC title for the Lady Cavs. Honorary Athletes of the Week go to all the fall sports seniors for doing superb jobs over the past four years. Best of luck in the future. That's all I got for this week in sports. Don't forget to tune in next week for next week's update. Best of luck to men's and women's soccer and the NCAA tourneys. Now back to Val. After Superstorm Sandy hit, residents in New York had to adjust to smartphone withdrawal. According to a technology consultant who lives in the East Village, not having hot water is one thing, but not having a phone is quite different. Without access to text messaging, Facebook, and even landline phone calls, those living in New York quickly gathered together at local bars to create ways of passing along information. The storm caused major damage, but being smartphoneless caused residents to realize how dependent they were on technology. A looming crisis takes turn for the worse in Sacramento, California, when the Sacramento police faced budget cuts. Chief Rick Brazil had to make drastic cuts to his force, such as laying off officers and eliminating the vice narcotic squad, which sent many detectives back to patrol. Traffic enforcement have been lowered, therefore the department only allows follow-up investigations for more serious crimes. According to the New York Times, crime rates have gone up across the country in the last two decades. But Chief Brazil says that even though the cuts have been made, his main priority is making sure that when someone calls 911, the call is answered and a police officer arrives in a timely fashion. The world's first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier comes home. The USS Enterprise finished its final voyage at sea this past Sunday since being involved in every major conflict since the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962. Family and friends gathered at the Naval Station in Virginia, where they welcomed home the ship. It was their 25th and final deployment at sea for nearly eight months. More than 2,000 combat sorties from their fighter planes flew over Afghanistan in support of the U.S. The ship even has an entire museum dedicated to the burning of the Twin Towers. The ship will never be used again and will eventually be scrapped in Washington State. The ship will be deactivated by the Navy on December 1st, but will take several years to be officially retired. That was your news from across the nation. Now here's Christine with the, your weekly entertainment update. Jay-Z has 99 problems, but Mitt ain't one. Performer Jay-Z joined President Barack Obama at a campaign rally in Columbus, Ohio on Monday night and offered a lyrical twist on his hip-hop hit, 99 Problems. Bruce Springsteen also rallied with Obama a day ahead of Tuesday's election. The rocker performed in Madison, Wisconsin. Shortly after revealing that she had recently undergone a double mastectomy, Sharon Osbourne is focusing on living her best life. The talks panelist says she's swearing off plastic surgery. Osborne explained on her show Monday night that she's done with plastic surgery and done with the abuse of not looking like herself. Osborne said that the problems she's experienced thanks to her breast implants also influence her decision to undergo the mastectomy. Katie Holmes made her return to Broadway in Dead Accounts as the dark comedy began previews Monday night after a delay caused by Hurricane Sandy. The play is about Wall Street greed and is written by Smash director Teresa Rebecca. Holmes plays a skeptical sister who awaits the return of her brother in Cincinnati. The play officially opens November 29th at Music Box Theater. That was your weekly entertainment update. Now let's go to Bethany for your trip around the world. Two girls will be honored because of the Malala attack that occurred on October 9th due to her efforts of standing up to the Taliban. In Pakistan, Kainat Riais and Shazia Ramzan were hurt during the attack and from their hospital beds, the two girls relayed Malala's message about the importance of girls continuing their education. According to both girls, they have no problem standing up to those that are against girls acquiring their education. Riaz and Ramzan will receive the Star of Courage, the third highest military award in Pakistan, which is not normally given to civilians. A skeleton of a carrier pigeon was found in a United Kingdom chimney with a mysterious World War II message still attached. According to historians at Britain's Second World War era code-breaking headquarters, the bird was definitely returning from Nazi-occupied France from June 1944 on the D-Day invasion. The content of the message remains unknown, since it was written in code, holding most sensitive secrets. A curator is now trying to figure out the message using World War II logbooks. 
Egypt's Coptic Christian minority picked their new pope this past Sunday. The picking of the pope is a process where a boy is blindfolded and chooses one of the three names from a crystal chalice. The 118th pope, Bishop Theodorus, replaced the former leader who passed away in March. Anxiety was raised within Egypt Christian minorities due to the former pope's death and major attacks against him in recent years. According to CNN, the attacks have caused worldwide condemnation. With all this talk about the election and lame duck presidents, our own Alex Sabo caught up with Dr. Hedke, a history and political science teacher and author of two books on lame duck presidents. Let's see what she has to say. Dr. James Hedke is the previous director of the History and Political Science Department. He has been here for 39 years so far and has since helped to create new majors, minors, and courses. He also coached softball for several years. But I think my the best year uh, that I coached was uh, when I came back in 1992. So they started out the season 0-10, uh, uh, and, and then we uh, won our next 11 games, uh, and uh, we made the uh, playoffs, uh, which I had to miss because of Dr. Idarola's uh, inauguration, uh, and we lost in the playoffs, one to nothing to uh, Arcadia. But that. That was the best coaching job because they didn't have a lot of raw material. It's easy to coach good players. It's a lot tougher when you really have to do something. Yeah. <laughs> Are you involved in any current projects in or outside of Cabrini? Well, I'm, I'm involved in a few projects, but the uh, I took my sabbatical to write a book about an air disaster in England during World War uh, II. Uh, and the, uh, the whole story and the people involved in it are very near and dear to my heart. So right now the book is finished and I'm hoping to get a publisher, which is the toughest part of doing all of that. Yeah. So what influ influenced you to write these books? Well, uh, what influenced me are, are, are things that I uh, uh, enjoy. I enjoy the American presidency, so that was my first book on the uh, American presidency. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a scholar of the Civil War, so my second book was on the, uh, the Civil War. And then I have two um, history textbooks that we use in my uh, course on U.S. survey. And this project uh, uh, in England uh, was based on a long-standing uh, friendship that my wife has uh, with a, a woman in the village of Freckleton. That's how I became acquainted with the story and, and the people in the story. Hmm. Do you have any advice for any students or teachers here? Just be yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, believe in the students, uh, be enthusiastic about what you do, and be fair. Uh, those are the most important things. Yeah. The, my, the one piece of advice I'd give to anybody uh, is to follow your passion, do the things you love. Mm -hmm. You take a job for uh, money, as Dr. Phil said, you'll pay for it the rest of your life. Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Valerie Ruiz. And I'm Bethany Vigenhill. Enjoy the rest of your week, Cabrini.